Civil War by Alex Garland, a movie that I'm sure everyone is going to react very normally to, and it's going to have great discourse online with nuance and everything that should be brought into a discussion like that. Uh, to be honest, I've been dreading this discourse really since I saw this trailer back in December. And once I learned what Alex Garland's Civil War movie was, I knew I was going to dread doing this review. And I actually saw this movie. Uh, I'm recording this Wednesday, April 10th. I saw this movie Monday night, uh, a few days before I got to see an advanced screening of it. And I've been putting a lot of thought into my opinions and my review and my critical analysis of Civil War because I just wanted to have an actual engaging conversation. And two, because I started reading criticism about this movie and I started reading other reviewers and critics that I respect and I can just see that this movie is going to be divisive and there's also points of contention that I really want to talk about today in my review of Civil War. Some of them that I think are completely nonsensical and this is not to call anyone out. This is more to just kind of share my thoughts about this movie and what worked and what didn't work about Civil War. But for those who do not know what Civil War is, and apologies, I will be referencing my notes throughout today because I have a lot of notes written down. Civil War is directed by Alex Garland, and Civil War follows a team of journalists who travel across the United States during an escalating Second American Civil War. Civil War stars Kirsten Dunst, Wagner Mora, Kaylee Spaney, Stephen McKinley Henderson, Nick Offerman, and Jesse Plemons. And I wanted to just kind of start this exercise of this review by talking about adjectives I would use to describe Alex Garland's Civil War. So I jotted down 10. Here were 10 adjectives that came to mind when talking about and thinking about Civil War. 10 words I would use to describe, tense, thrilling, brisk, unsettling, loud, stressful, concise, scathing, unapologetic, political. These are the 10 words I would use to describe Civil War. And what works best about Civil War? I honestly think it's Alex Garland's direction in this movie. I don't think this movie works without Alex Garland's hand behind the camera and behind the story. And Garland throws you headfirst into this movie. There's very little explanation of what's going on, what has befallen. And there's this kind of broad conflict that we feel escalating in America. And I think some people are mistakenly taking this kind of broadness approach to it and this uncertainty of what exactly has transpired before to basically lead to this second American Civil War as Garland being apolitical. And I think that is a mistake to approach this as. And to me, it's not that it is apolitical. It's rather that this conflict is muddled. And while this conflict is muddled, and that is very true because there is this aspect of this movie where no side is clearly defined. We have these Western forces of California, Texas. We have this Florida alliance. We have the United States of America led by the president played by Nick Offerman, a very fascinating choice of casting in it. And so while we're not exactly sure how this all transpired, we are clear of a few things, and Alex Garland made this point really well in his interview with The Daily Show. He essentially said there are aspects of this movie that are vague on purpose, and then there are other aspects of this movie that are extremely specific. And that's how I found this conflict to be in this movie, because yes, while there is some broadness of our understanding of what exactly led to this civil war, and that adds a little bit of muddiness to this story, the archetype of what started this war is very clear. This next point, I think, is actually critical to understanding Alex Garland's vision for Civil War. And it's a term that I feel like I've been seeing people use kind of loosely in describing Civil War. And that is that Alex Garland's approach to Civil War is apolitical. The definition of apolitical is defined as not interested or involved in politics. Some are critiquing this film as being both sided and Garland not taking a stance either way, which for a movie about a civil war would obviously be 
faulty because the Civil War uh, is a political subject. And that would be an issue if that was true about Civil War. I actually don't understand how anyone can call this film apolitical. I think it's pretty clearly defined in politicalness. And that apolitical aspect that people are talking about in this film is not actually about the film. Rather, it's about the film's characters. His journalist characters in this film, they see themselves as apolitical. Basically, the truth comes through their camera. And that would be an issue, again, kind of being like, well, this is apolitical and not really taking a stance. And how can a journalist be apolitical? Except that's what Garland is asking in this film. He's essentially saying, how can a journalist be apolitical? That doesn't make any sense. How can a wartime photographer be apolitical? And despite that, the characters insist on that, that they are apolitical. So they're doing one thing. They're lying to themselves. And maybe they are doing this apolitical stance to try to uh, approach something as truthfulness. However, that is ridiculous. And that's what this film is wrestling with. I've seen some people describe Civil War as a love letter to journalism and journalists, I actually cannot comprehend that evaluation of this movie because this movie is a lot of things, but a clear-cut love letter to journalists is just not one of those things this movie is. This movie is very distrusting of wartime journalists and the political landscape and polarization that can one day lead to basically the destruction of a free press and quality journalism uh, these characters are very flawed at times it almost feels like tmz reporters are what these wartime journalists are they're not actually interested in the weight of what they are seeing they are completely desensitized from the violence they are uh beholden to rather they're there to get the picture they're there to get quote unquote the unsavory solicitous photo that is going to rock and scandalize a nation to shock a nation that's what they're concerned with and i think some people are then going to mistake this film of well this film is then kind of saying journalist jobs are useless that is not at all what alex garland is trying to approach in this movie and again this is kind of where watching the film i thought it was very clear cut he is showing the importance of what good journalism looks like and in this dystopian world we live in, in this world of civil war, uh, as the movie presents itself, basically this is what bad journalism can lead to. And this type of journalism that feels more sensational than anything else, that's what leads, to, or at the very least, is a factor into this type of civil war that we find ourselves in. Their job feels more exploitive, and I think that's what Alex Garland is approaching. But let's not get it confused. The antagonist of this movie, the President of the United States, is very clearly defined as the bad guy. What exactly led up to everything, we don't know. But the film starts off by giving us just enough context. And this context may sound familiar, and it's supposed to sound familiar. All we know about this president is he refuses to succeed power. He is in his third term. He has dismantled law and order by taking out the FBI, breaking it down, and he is causing airstrikes on civilians. Basically, anyone who goes against him, he views as a traitor to the United States. And with that, we need to now talk about the elephant of the room because the elephant of the room is key to this. President Donald J. Trump. And while Civil War and Alex Garland are not directly about Donald Trump per se, it is about the dangers of a Trump-like presidency and what that poses to democracy. And people who say that this film is apolitical and takes no sides, it befuddles me. Here's what we know about this president, as I already said it. It's a president who refuses to secede power and begins his third term while dismantling law and order. His supporters serve as militia fervent to kill, and they're willing to kill anyone they deem not Americans 
and especially anyone that they deem as an immigrant. Does that sound familiar? Because it should. I think some people really wanted Offerman's character to be far more tied into the Trump persona and maybe parody Trump's iconography, thus calling it apolitical for not going after him. Here is how I thought about watching this movie, and this is kind of where my critical analysis really kicks in. Americans know the context of Trump. I didn't need this movie to hold my hand. I actually think it's a quite a wise decision of this movie not to hold my hand. Alex Garland gives the audience credit enough that they're smart enough to understand the depiction of this fascist leader and make the connection to the real world. So some of the political vagueness that comes with it is intentional and you are supposed to view it as fictitious, but you're also supposed to view it as kind of the fault lines and the warning signs to what could lead to an event like this. So when I see disingenuous critical analysis of this movie, one of the big ones I've seen is this idea of the Western forces of California and Texas being aligned. And one of the main complaints I hear about it is, how could this be? How could California and Texas, these liberal haven and this conservative haven, all of a sudden work together and basically be the Western forces uh, aligning against the president of the United States and the United States. What is this world that we live in? Does it matter? I don't understand that. Does it matter? Because it doesn't change the clear fascist depiction of the president and the militia we see throughout the film. There was actually one moment where my friend and I, while watching the movie, I leaned over to him because there is the sequence of the movie where there is this what appears to be a very redneck uh, militia member who is committing some really heinous and cruel forms of torture on somebody. And the way he talks and the way of the casualness of it and how he villainizes this person that he knows, my friend and I leaned over to each other and we're like, we know that guy. We straight up, went to high school with a guy like that. And I think that is key to understanding this movie and some of the subtlety that this movie allows because we're allowed to make those connections. So when we see someone like that, we know who they are, we know where their stances are, and we even kind of understand that this isn't just the classical case of a classic liberal or a classic conservative. This is something far more dangerous. It's something far more cruel and violent and that's what we are talking about in this film something so polarizing and extreme it's this extremity is what this film is capturing so this militia that we see throughout the film this is the worst of the worst and this president that we see we can connect it to the real world and in fact most of it if not all of it should be pretty connected to the real world but what it's rather showing is not the conservative nature of the president, rather the polarization that this president uh, is creating and what he's doing and the fervor and fan base that he's riling up and the dangers of that and basically how a free press is allowing him to do that and is giving him the space and opportunity and thus become too scared. They kind of get defanged. That's really what this movie is focusing on. And there was this quote that I read from Alex Garland today, and I wanted to read it here because I actually think it is quite enlightening. In reference to Civil War, Alex Garland said, the film is intended to be a conversation, so it doesn't assert too much. But I also believe that everybody understands internally why. He goes on to say, this is also true of my country, he is British, and many, many others that are dealing with the effects of polarization and populism. We don't need it explained. We know exactly why it might happen. We know what the fault lines and pressures are. So yes, you could make the claim that this film is neither liberal or conservative, and there might be some truth to it. But in that same breath, we know who this film is referencing. We understand what the essentially fault lines and how this is very connected to modern day America and politics and stuff that we are seeing across the world. 
And with that all said, I think that's the politics of this film. And that's a very long-winded answer to basically say that I do not understand this apolitical stance that people are having for Civil War. Because I think they make it quite clear in this movie. And I think the nuance of this movie rises above. I appreciate it that they're like, no, the audience can understand. They can make the assessment. They can make the connection themselves. I completely understand why some people are going to have issues with this approach. I found the internal logic of this film to work better due to its less explanation, rather thematic weight of it. I felt the thematic weight of what America was going through and the fault lines that America was currently facing, especially in this election year, more than I needed it to carry me through and kind of explain detail by detail. Here's how it's connected. Here's what this means. Here's this parallel, all that. I could make those assessments myself, and thus I don't feel this film to be apolitical. What I do find this film to be is extremely encapturing and just edge-of-your-seat filmmaking. Alex Garland's sound design is incredible. The performances are all exceptional. I think Dunst and Kaylee Spaney are wonderful in this film. Jesse Plemons comes into this movie for a very memorable scene. It's the best scene of this movie, and it is the most frightening depiction of abuse of power and people who have lost all control or humanity and the cruelty that we can enact on each other. This film is a warning, and that warning is if we allow this to keep growing, if we allow this to keep going unchecked, if we keep making the same mistakes, if journalists feel like they have to go apolitical for their own protection, if essentially we cannot have a free press that monitors, that regulates, and that is the backbone of a democracy, here's what's going to happen. And you're closer to this reality than this idealistic reality that you so want to believe for your country. And I found it terrifying, and I found it gripping, and Civil War was a knockout success for me. I do view Civil War as an indictment and almost a plea. I felt the passion of this, and especially when listening to Alex Garland talk about this movie, I felt an artist trying to essentially say, please, please stop before the train derails. And in this movie, the train derails, and the aftermath is horrendous, It's terrifying, and it's so worth seeing on the big screen. See it in IMAX if you can. It's just, this movie is so loud and so visceral, and by the end, I left shaking, and I also cannot wait to revisit it. Civil War is a huge thumbs up for me. I'm going four and a half out of five stars.